Welcome back to the Wasteland Vault Dwellers. Today, we're continuing our quest to make the coolest and the most detailed Fallout mock there's ever been, and in this video, things are about to get even more interesting. Last time, we talked about the overall plan and made a couple of crucial parts of the mock, like the road and the vault door, and in this update, we're moving on with the landscape and what is something totally new on the channel, we'll be making a pretty iconic element for the diorama that will definitely define this build as something straight from that universe. But before we dive into this post-apocalyptic awesomeness, don't be a ghoul and hit that like button and subscribe if you're just fresh out of the vault, because our journey is just starting and we have a lot in store before we reach the end. War may never change, but this LEGO Wasteland is about to change the game. So grab your Nuka Cola, put on your Pip Boy, and let's get started right now. Okay, so let's just start where we left the mock in the previous episode. We have the road finished and now it's time to cover both sides of it with some desert landscape. The technique I'll be using here may not be the most complicated one, but that's not the point. The thing is that I'll be putting most of my effort into making it as detailed as possible. First, I've extended the dark tan spot below the road level and in the front part of the base plate I'm making some small hills, making the terrain uneven to have it more interesting. As I told you guys last time, the colors I'm using here are tan and dark tan for the sand, but also I've started incorporating some medium nougat spots. Not much since I don't want the ground to look too overwhelming, but I think that little additions like this are definitely giving the mock the character it needs. On top of it, I'm of course adding some plant pieces and other small details like the different colored dots and plates representing the rocks and this way we've established a pattern that will more or less dominate the entire landscape. So now let's move on with this side and see how would it all look together. Ok guys, I may not be too modest when I say it, but this is looking awesome. These three ground colors along with the different colored plants just looks so good. Using a lot of different wedges and tiles, I managed to make a boring sand surface so interesting that I just can't believe my eyes that it's just Lego. But the downside of this is that I use so much wedge plates that for sure I will be running out of them soon, so I think I should make an order right now so that I don't waste too much time and then I'll get back to you with some progress on the other side of the road. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, here as you might have guessed, the technique is nothing different than before, just a bunch of wedge plates, tiles and plants, and I'm slowly covering the second front base plate. But with this part, as predicted, I'm almost completely out of 10 wedge plates, so it's a good thing I've ordered them so quickly. Unfortunately, 2x3 tan wedge plates are not a very common piece on Bricklink, so I only took a few and the rest I will probably have to order from Pick a Brick Online and that means I will have to wait about a month until I'll be able to finish the entire landscape. But don't you worry, we still have some other things to do besides that. So first let's check out the small bricklink order I got so quickly thanks to the magic of video editing, which should help me out with this episode a lot and hopefully allow me to finish the front base plate. So what do we have here? Now that's what I called good sorting. Every piece type is in separate compartment, nicely packed, but what did we actually bought? Don't mind this sand green element since they will probably not be used here as I took them just to restock, but we have here a bunch of 2x3 plates in 10, some modified 1x4 tiles in 10, again some sand green for later, few accessories, and the most important ones being wedges in tan and medium nougat in different variations, so some rounded ones, a bunch of most needed 2x3s, some 3x3 three three corners, and a couple of 2x2 two two wedges in medium nougat. Overall, not the biggest haul, but yet so necessary for the rest of today's groundwork. Ok, so with these couple of new parts, 
we should be able to finish this area of the landscape. But first I want to show you what I've been working on in the meantime because the ground here must be adjusted to that iconic thing I mentioned in the intro. A classic fallout pickup or should I say picker up. I wanted to make a car wreck from the very beginning because fallout cars have that unique look to them and such weird shapes that I was very curious how will they translate into lego. But you know what they say, be careful what you wish for and man have I had a struggle to build this. Not only making cars is not my cup of tea since the last one I made was long before my dark age, but the rounded shapes in this specific car were not at all easy to make with bricks. But after a couple of days I was able to make this and I have to say I am very happy of how it turned out. The shape is very similar to the source material which was the main goal here, but also I was able to make it a very sturdy model. This is of course a clean new version of the car, which I wanted to start with just to have an overall idea of the shape. And after I finished it completely, I then moved on to making the rusted post-apocalyptic version. And to be honest, it looks even better than before with all the dark orange and brown pieces making up for the rust, broken down door and other damaged pieces. And since I made the whole thing in studio to figure out how I want to approach the techniques, I had the base for making the entire instruction for it and that is exactly what I did. So if you want to build this car for yourself, I will leave a link to my rebrickable page in the video description where I uploaded both versions for everyone who wants to add it to their collection. Bricklink estimates the cost of the entire thing at about 35 to 40 euros for the clean version give or take, because I've used some of the newer parts from 2023 and 24, so I'm guessing it will be less when buying from Pick or Brick or just taking apart some sets. But anyway, let's get back to the physical build and let's see how this car will fit with the rest. The pickup is of course just a colorful prototype for now since I didn't have all the pieces in the correct colors, but for now it will have to do. So now let's find a good spot for fitting the prototype so that we can continue working on the landscape with all of the new parts I got from the hall. I decided to place the car in a gap I had here, which should be a nice place to present it, so now it's time to surround it with wedges so that we have as little gaps as possible, while still having the car buried a bit from the back. The idea here is that the raiders will use this pickup truck as part of their fortifications, and on the flatbed I will later make a turret of some sort to help them protect their camp, but that I will make later on because for now I just want to finish this part of the groundwork. And again what I'm doing here is just covering the ground with all sorts of parts trying to match the technique from the other side, mixing some colors and trying to make it as natural as possible. And with that out of the way, we have the entirety of the front finished, so in the next update we can move on with the biggest section of the mock that will hold the vault itself. For that I will probably need a lot more wedges for the ground though, and since they are not that widely available on Bricklink this could take a while, but even if I don't have the parts in time for the next episode, I will just lay down the foundations for the landscape and we will move on to making the rocks and the vault entry. As for now, 
I'm getting more and more excited of how the build is starting to look with all of the details I've already done, but the most exciting thing is that it's just the landscape, so the real details are yet to come, so it will only get better with time. But how do you guys like the progress I was able to make for today? Do you like how the landscape and the car turned out? Or maybe you'd make them differently? Let me know in the comment section below and of course leave a like under this video and subscribe if you somehow haven't done that yet. But now having all that said, have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next video here on Kubrick. And until then, as always, make sure you keep it bricking.